Mark 16, verse number 15. I got to get you a little word and then something's about to break out in here. Touch your neighbor. Touch your neighbor. Say, don't wait for him to finish. Now, don't wait for him to finish. Say, when this thing hits you, bust a move. Just when, when it hits you, whatever it is. Look at Mark 16 real quick. I got I to gotta hurry. Mark 16 and verse number 15. And Jesus is speaking on the resurrection side of an empty grave and he says to them and he said go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature he who believes and is baptized will be saved and he who does not believe will be condemned verse number 17 and these signs the Greek word here is the word Simeon, which means signals or indications or evidences. And these signals, these indications, these evidences shall follow them that believe. In my name, uh, they will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues, they will take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Lay your hands on somebody to your left or your right and tell them these indications, evidences shall follow you in the name of Jesus. Be seated in the presence of the Lord. Now very quickly, I need to talk to you about a couple of things here because there is an assignment that was given to me some years ago i shall never forget it i was in london england i had just preached at the wembley uh, auditorium and i went into my uh, hotel room there i was staying at the grovner house in hyde park i got in late and when i got in late that night i came into the room and god bear me witness in the holy ghost when i came into the room i had a visitation of the spirit of god a a a, a mist a smoke began to come underneath the door into the hotel room a billowing like smoke and filled the entire room I, I was i was brought to my face in the presence of god and i would go down i would pray in the holy ghost i would get up and i would write and i would go back down and and write some more and god was speaking to me i would get up and, and, and pray in the holy ghost i would go back down praying in the spirit i would write some more. it felt like it had I had only transpired for about 25 uh, or, or 30 minutes. When I woke up, I had spent 12 hours in the presence of God. And I was writing during that time. And it was during this time that the Spirit of the Lord said something to me about an assignment that he had given me some time ago that I had sort of shirked from because of fear. And I had studied the great healing evangelists, the great miracle workers of past days gone by. And I had recognized that though they had mighty moves of signs and wonders, most of them didn't finish well. That's right. They died drunk. They died, died sick. They died alcoholics. They died in some negative form. And it took me back from moving in this dimension although i had i knew i had a miracle anointing on my life for god's people and there was a healing ministry that had been committed to my care and it was during this time that the spirit of grace said to me the lord said to me he said son it has never been well he said to me first of all the fires of the healing ministry and doctrine are going out in the 21st century church and i'm commanding you to get back to it and when he said, I'm commanding you to get back to it, it was like the whole room shook. I, I heard this. He said, the fires of the healing ministry and doctrine are going out in the 21st century church. He said, I'm commanding you to get back to it. I, 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 I remember thinking to the Lord, I said, God, some of the greatest healing ministries that have ever been on planet earth are on planet earth right now. Reinhard Bonnke was having great crusades during this time. And uh, Benny Hinn was having millions in, in, in India. And I said, Lord, some of the, and he said, I did not say healing ministry. He said, I said healing ministry and doctrine. I said, what do you mean? He said, there's a lot of gifts going on. He said, but doctrine is what my word teaches about an issue. When we talk about doctrine, we're talking about teaching. What does the word say on a matter? And then he said these words to me, Apostle Amos, I shall never forget them. He said, it has never been my intention 
for believers to pack out arenas to watch another believer heal the sick. You didn't hear what I just said. He said, it has never been my intention for believers to pack out arenas to watch another believer heal the sick. Now, don't get me wrong. There will always be great men and women of God who are used by God in demonstrative ways to do various things. But he said to me, healing and miracles are to be a body ministry. They are not to be worked by a few anointed people in pulpits. And then he took me to this. He said, and these signs shall follow them that believe. It doesn't say bishops that believe or apostles or pastors or prophets or teachers that believe. It says them. And the Spirit of the Lord said, he said, your assignment is to make sure God's people understand they are one of them. Lay your hand on your brother. Lay your hand on your sister and say, I am one of them. And you are not supposed to be following signs. They are supposed to be following you. Indications. Evidences. Of this thing you say you believe. But now, now we've got to qualify. And now we've got to dig deeper. It was, it, 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 and I love this. I've, I'm saying it everywhere I go. It's not original. The first person I heard say it was Dr. Bill Winston. He not, might not have been the first person to say it. I say he's the first person I heard say it. He said, he keeps saying, if we're going to live on another level, we've got to start eating on another level. In other words, if we're going to go into what it is that Jesus has intended for us and see it, hear it, in our own lives and in the lives of others. See, you cannot minister what you do not possess. And one of the reasons that we're not saying, so I began to look at the Lord and over these years he's been saying some things to me, but I want you to pay attention to this. Go back to verse 15, Mark 16. I got to hurry with this. I don't have, oh no. he said to them, go into all the world. Very interesting word. This word world, it's the Greek word cosmos, from which we get our English word cosmetic. Cosmos is, it literally means the arrangement, the decorations and the props. Go into all the cosmos, the world. See, the arrangement, the decorations, and the props. The world and the earth are not the same. The earth is the planet. The world are the systems that the enemy has built on the planet. This is why David in Psalm, I believe it is 24, he separates him. He says, the earth is the Lord's. And the fullness thereof. And then he says, the world, prophetically. Because the earth belongs to God, but the world does not. You didn't hear what I just said. Now how did the earth, how does the earth belong? Are you here? The earth belongs to God, but the world does not. Satan, Lucifer, is called the God, little g, of this, uh, of this arrangement. See, God had an original intention. In the garden, when Adam abdicated his authority to Lucifer, Lucifer stepped into the office of God. God is not a name. <laughs> God is not a name. God is an office. You didn't hear what I just said. God is not a name. You say, well, where do you get that? From the Bible. In Exodus chapter 6, when God is introducing himself to Moses, he says, I made myself known to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as El Shaddai, God Almighty, the Almighty God, but by my name, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jehovah, I was not known to them. God is not a name. God is an office. The Lord said it to me. He said, it's like president. Whoever moves into the office gets the title. Adam was created God of the earth. God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness and let them have. Talk to me. Talk to me. Domin dominion is what a king has, which is why the area of a king's rule is called a king dome. The area of the king's dominion. So God created Adam to be king. God in the earth. He said, let us make man in our 
image and after our likeness. The two Hebrew words are demuth and selen. Let us make man in our demute. Let us make man to, to in our image. Let us make man to resemble us and let him function the way we function. Yes, sir. Y'all didn't hear me. Yes, let us make man to resemble us in the earth and let him function like we function. That's image and likeness. So who is God in heaven? He is final word, ultimate authority, last word. Who is man to be in the earth? Ultimate authority, final word. You, you're not listening. This is, what, this is what Jesus said. Behold, I give unto you power. One of the Greek words here is jurisdiction. Juris meaning law. Diction meaning to speak. I give you the authority to lay down the law. I give you the authority to finish it. Lay your hand on your brother. Lay your hand on your sister. Say we're going somewhere. So, so, so watch this. When Adam abdicates his authority in the earth to Lucifer, Lucifer is then given authority to begin to set up systems, worlds, on God's planet, decorations, props. Now I live in, in LA, I live in Hollywood, where they make a lot of shows you see on TV. When you go and you look at these shows on television, it looks like you're in a real house. When you go to the studio, you see all they are is props. It looks real, but you can't live in it. This is what Satan has created on God's planet. He has created systems that look real, but you can't live in them. The political system is a prop. The educational system is a prop. The financial system is a prop. Come on. Sit down. Lay, lay your hand on your brother. Lay your hand on him. Tell him you can't live in the props. This is why when Luke chapter 4, the Bible says that Jesus, that Lucifer, that Satan came to get it and showed him all the kingdoms of this world in a moment of time and said, I'll give all these to you for they are mine to give. Are y'all here? This is why the ultimate declaration in the book of Revelation is the kingdoms of this are now become the of our... Uh -huh. Well, who's going to take them over? <laughs> lay your hand on your brother, lay your hand on your sister, ask him, are you tracking him? him? Nudge your other neighbor and say, he won't be very much longer, I promise you. So watch this. Go into all the world, go into all the decorations. Go into all the props and preach the gospel to every creature. Watch this. And, and that word creature there doesn't just mean living thing. The Greek word is katesis. It literally means every construct, edifice, everything that's been built. Go into everything that's been built and demonstrate a better way of living. Go, go, go into every dimension and show them how to do this thing. Show them how to actually function. Show them how to actually live by a higher standard of principles than this world has established. Now watch this. And he said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Watch this. I got to get somewhere. Next verse. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. He who does not believe will be condemned. Watch it. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Ah! Now we've hit on the issue. He who believes and is baptized shall be saved. He who believes what? See, here is the problem. This is why we don't have signs following believers. He who believes and is baptized shall He who believes what? What? He said go in the world and preach the gospel. He who believes the gospel Ah, and is baptized. Now this cannot be a reference to water baptism. We got to talk here just a minute. If we're if we going to get to this and we're going to see miracles, not only tonight, but flowing through our life, we got to settle this. He who believes and is baptized shall be saved. This cannot be a reference to water. Now, how, how can you say that? Because if this is a reference to water, then Jesus just lied. 
and Jesus is not a liar. Because if that is a reference to water baptism, then Jesus has just said that you must believe and be water baptized to be saved. And water baptism is not necessary for salvation. It is a sign of being born again and you should be baptized in water, but you don't have to be baptized in water to be saved. So, so, if that is true, and we know that it is, by grace are you saved through faith and that of yourself. It is grace and faith plus nothing that saves you. Not what about baptism. So if this is a reference to water baptism, then the statement can't be true. Therefore, it cannot be a reference to water baptism. He who believes and is baptized shall be saved. And these signs shall follow the one who believes this gospel and is baptized into this gospel. Lay your hand on your brother. Lay your hand on your sister. And say, now we're getting ready to go somewhere. Now you must understand this. You can take my word for it. Write it down if you're taking notes. Hebrews chapter 6. The Bible teach about, teaches about a doctrine of baptisms. Plural. plural. There is more than one baptism in the Bible. The problem with us is every time we read the word baptize, we think water. We impose water every time we see baptism. Every time the Bible says baptize, it's not talking about water. The Bible has a doctrine of baptism. Hebrews chapter 6. Paul says, let us go on from the doctrine of baptisms and repentance toward God. He says, let us go on. Do I need to show it to you? Yeah, I do. Hebrews chapter 6. Because you're looking at me like I'm speaking from another world. I am. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 6 and verse... Number one, if you're there, shall I am. Therefore, leaving the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection or, or to maturity, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God. Watch this. Watch this. Or the doctrine of baptisms. Baptism. So there's more than one baptism. There's a baptism with water. There's a baptism with fire. There's a baptism with the Holy Ghost. There's a baptism into Christ's death. There's a baptism into Christ's resurrection. Now, the word baptize, it is the Greek word baptizo. It literally means to be immersed in or to be enveloped in. This is a $100 bill. The moment I put this $100 bill into this envelope, the $100 bill has been baptized into the envelope. Now, you see the envelope. You do not see the $100 bill. But once the $100 bill has been baptized into the envelope, everything that happens to the envelope happens to the $100 bill. Anywhere the envelope goes, the bill goes. Anything that occurs to the envelope occurs to the $100 bill because it has been baptized into the envelope. This is what the Bible teaches. Happened to you and me in Christ's death, burial, resurrection, ascension, and seating. Romans chapter 6 verse number 3. Put it up! Romans chapter 6 and verse number three. I wish I had time to teach this. Or do you not know? Look at your neighbor and say, don't you know this? No, look at them and say, don't you know this, you Christian you? Don't you know this, you believer you? Or do you not know that as many of us as were immersed, enveloped into Christ, Jesus were baptized into his death. Can we read on? Woo! Therefore, we were buried with him. Why? Because you were baptized into him at his death. So when he was buried, you're not listening to me. Therefore, we were buried with him. This is not poetry. This is not allegory. 
This is what Paul refers to in the book of Colossians as faith in the operation of God. He calls it, we have to have faith in the operation of God. He's talking about a military operation. He is telling you that the crucifixion was a military operation. It was a covert op. You're not listening to me. It was an operation of God that the enemy knew nothing about. This is why Paul said, if they had known, he said, if any of the princes, the Greek word there is archaeon. He's not talking about Pilate. He's talking about principalities and powers. He said, if any of the princes of this world had known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. If they knew that God had put you in him, you did it. If they understood the covert operation, of, you know what a covert operation is. It's when one side doesn't tell the other side what they're doing. Sit down. Sit down. So watch this. He says, therefore we were buried with him through baptism into death. Watch this. That just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk, or we are walking, is what it actually says, in newness of life. Everybody say newness of life. But that's very important. That's very important. Reading on, reading on, verse 5. For if we have, oh, don't miss this. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death. These words here, united together, look them up. It is the Greek word, sumphutos, which literally means, watch this, to be together through a process. No, you didn't get it. You didn't get it. It says we were united with him through a process. In other words, once he that knew no sin was made to be sin, once he took my sin, according to the operation of God, we were together through the whole process. For if we have been united together, so you were baptized in death. If we've been united together in the likes of his death, certainly, absolutely, without a doubt, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. So here's the question: How is he? No, 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 no. Lay your hand on your brother. Lay your hand on your sister. Say you will get this. So some of you are going to drive home and it's going to hit you right before you get home. You have to pull over and lift up your hands and scream. But you will get this. Watch this. Well, watch this. He said, certainly we shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. So watch this. We were together through the whole process. Now we have to really qualify what the gospel is. Because the reason we're not seeing signs is because we haven't preached it. Not the fullness of it. We have preached his death, his burial, and his resurrection. And we think that's the gospel. That's what Paul says it is. 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15. You there? Follow me. I'm going to back it up with book. I don't just talk. 1 Corinthians 15. Are you still here? Verse number 1. Put it up, put it up, put it up. Moreover, brethren, Paul was preaching, I declare to you the gospel. Okay, so Paul is saying this is the gospel. I declare to you the gospel which I preach to you, which also you receive and in which you stand. So Paul's about to tell us what the gospel is. I, de I declare to you the gospel which I preach to you, which you also receive and in which you stand. Look at verse 2. I'm going all the way to verse 4. By which also you are saved, if you hold fast that word which I preach to you, unless you believed in vain. So Paul is saying... I know what I preached to you, so I know what you know because I preached it. Yeah. Watch this. For I delivered to you, first of all, that which I also received. That Christ died for our sins yes. according to the scriptures. There's number one. Yes. Number two, that he was buried. There's number two. Yes. Number three, and that he rose again according to the scriptures. That's number three. And that's where we stop. <laughs> he got up. <laughs> Ain't he all right? <laughs> Won't he do it? Uh -huh. Lord, hallelujah, he's alive. Uh -huh. But watch it. He said it's not just that he died for our sins. Not just that he was buried. 
Not just that he rose. Look at the very next one. Number four. And that he was seen. Yes. Ah. That he died. He was buried. He rose. And he was seen. Meaning. There was a revelation of him. After. His resurrection. That was separate. From before. His resurrection. Oh, I wish I had time. I wish I had time to deal with this. Because if you don't understand this, you'll miss the point. You must understand that Jesus of Nazareth did not preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm, I'm going to say that again. Heresy. Jesus of Nazareth did not preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. He couldn't because it wasn't finished. And he said himself, if I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. Do I need to give you chapter and verse because I got it. He said himself, if I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. Are you still here? He said himself, I did not come to destroy the law. I came to fulfill it. So Jesus in his earthly ministry is not establishing the new covenant. He is finishing the old. Come on. If we were going to be accurate, your new testament shouldn't start till the book of Acts. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is the finish of the old. I need you to hear me. Now, in his earthly ministry, Jesus is laying down principles of the new covenant, but it's not in force. Because it's not finished. This is why Jesus, when he's talking about John the Baptist, says of men born of women, there has not risen a greater prophet than John the Baptist. Why was John the greatest prophet? Because he was the prophet who was bridging the end of the old and the beginning of the new. Are y'all here? I said, are you all here? So Jesus does not preach the gospel. If you want... So if all you do is preach Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you have not yet preached the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is the Apostle Paul who is primarily responsible for revealing the finished work of Jesus. Everything we know about Jesus' finished work primarily comes to us through Paul. Nowhere in the gospels is Jesus called the mediator. Nowhere in the gospels is he called the advocate. Nowhere in the Gospels is he, are you here? Nowhere in the Gospels is he referred to by these times. It's Paul that gets this revelation of the finished work of Jesus and what he actually accomplished through his death, his burial, his resurrection, and his ascension. Are you still here? I said, are you still here? Now, when Paul says this and he was seen, he is speaking primarily to people who understand the importance of that because it's high priest language. Because according to the law of Moses, which Jesus came to fulfill. I need you to pay attention. I'll be done in a minute and then I'm going to pray for you and miracles are going to happen. But you got to understand this. You got to understand this. It, the Bible says that Jesus came to fulfill the old covenant, the law of Moses. So he's functioning in his earthly ministry after his death as a high priest. The high priest in Israel was to go once a year into the Holy of Holies with the blood of the bulls and goats on Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. Once a year, he would go with the blood. He would wash ceremonially. Once he washed, he could not be touched by human hands. He had to wash according to the law, and he could not be touched by human hands because... Uh, because sin was transferred by the laying on of hands. This is why the whole incident happened with the scapegoat. Before he would go back, he would lay his hands on a goat to transfer the sin of the nation onto the goat and then take the goat outside the camp and the goat would be slain. Are y'all here? So he would have to ceremonially wash. Now, after he ceremonially washed, only he, nudge your neighbor, say, only he. Only he could go in, do you remember the outer court? 
inner court, holy of holies. There was the veil. Only he could go behind the veil and make atonement for the sacrifice. Where the Shekinah glory of God would descend over the Ark of the Covenant. And he would make atonement. If the sacrifice was accepted. If the sacrifice was accepted. The high priest would come back out behind the veil. And the only way the nation knew that the sacrifice was accepted is if the high priest came back out and was seen by the people. If he went in and didn't come back out, it was because the sacrifice was not accepted. And when the Shekinah glory of God came down, the high priest would be slain in the presence of God. So, if he was seen, it was evidence that the sacrifice was accepted and the work was finished. Are y'all here? I said, are y'all here? Lay your hand on your brother. Lay your hand on your sister saying his being seen means the work is finished. Means nothing else needs to be done for you to receive every benefit you're not listening. Nothing else needs to be done for you to receive every benefit that his sacrifice was for. Oh, I wish you, I had time to preach this. If you study the book of Hebrews, the book of Hebrews teaches you that the nation of Israel was accepted or rejected, not based on their performance, but based on the performance of the high priest. If the high priest did his job, the nation got all the benefits. If the high priest failed, the nation was judged. So their status before God was not based on their performance, but on the performance of their high priest. Now your Bible teaches that this Jesus, when he was resurrected, is finishing this old covenant and he is functioning as your high priest. As a matter of fact, the Hebrew writer calls him the apostle and high priest of our confession of this new covenant. Now this is why when Jesus gets up on the resurrection side of a grave and he's in the garden and they don't recognize him and Mary comes and asks him, where have they laid my Lord? Do you know where he is? And he looked at her and says, Mary, and she says, Rabboni. And the Bible says, she gets ready to touch him. And he says, don't touch me. Why? For I have not yet ascended to my father. He is speaking high priest language. In other words, he said, I haven't finished the sacrifice. I haven't done it according to the law. And I got to make sure it's done to the letter. If you touch me, you'll blow this whole thing. He says, don't touch me. Why? Because I have not yet ascended to my father. But eight days later, when he walks into John Mark's upper room, he says, touch me. For a spirit has not flesh and bone like you see me have. So somewhere in that eight days, Bishop Best, somewhere in that eight days, he had gone into the Holy of Holies in the heavens, made the sacrifice. Sit down. I'm almost done. I'm almost done, but I'm not trying to hype you. I'm trying to help you. Lay your hand on your brother. Lay your hand. The Bible says this, our high priest, once he had by himself gone in and purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Lay your hand on your brother. Lay your hand on your sister. Say, don't miss this. If you know anything about the old covenant, there is no seat in the holy of holies, in the earthly tabernacle. And the reason there is no seat is because the work was never finished. Every year, the high priest would have to come back and do it again because the blood of bulls and goats can never take away sin. But the Bible says when our high priest went in and did it with his own blood, he sat down 
at the right hand of God. Why? Because the work was finished. Lay your hand on your brother. Lay your hand on your sister. The work was finished. Meaning, no more sacrifice needs to be made for sin. No more bargains with God. No more, I'll never do it again. You don't even have to ever tell him you'll never do it again. He doesn't believe you'll never do it again. When you tell him you'll never do it again. So you don't even have to say you'll never do it again. Are you there? I said, are you there? No, no, no. See, see we, miss, we, miss, we miss the importance of this. Lay your hand on your brother. Lay your hand on your sister. Tell him he's almost done yelling at you, I promise. We miss the importance of this. When John sees Jesus and says, behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world because we are Western Christians we don't get the importance of that. we don't hear that like Jews heard that because every Jew knew they had to bring their own lamb yes. they had to bring their own sacrifice they had to bring their own offering for sin when John says behold the Lamb of God he is saying you don't have to bring anything anymore God has supplied his own lamb now 2 Corinthians 5, 17, put it up. Put it up. Because the work is finished. And because you were with him through the whole process. And he was raised differently than he was sown. You, you, you know, you didn't get it. Because you died, because you were with him through the whole process. See, you got to stop letting the devil tell you that you're going to die with what you've already died with you, you know you, you know you did you, you did you didn't miss it you, you, you didn't get it you got to stop allowing him to convince you that what you've got will kill you when you've already died with it no, no you didn't get what i just said you already died with it the disease that the enemy is telling you is going to kill you you've already died with it see you're looking at me like i'm crazy you look at me like I'm crazy, but you can't be born again unless you died. Yeah. You, didn't, you, you cannot be born again unless you died. The question is, when did you die? Heaven has it recorded that you died with him. You already died for your sins. With him. You already died with that sickness. With him. See, some of you are looking at me like I'm speaking poetry. This is new creation reality. Heaven has it recorded that you've already died. But if you let the enemy convince you, it'll kill you. You can't die with it. Not unless you accept it. Oh, I'm going to show, I'm going to show you something, Bishop Best. If y'all will give me 10 minutes, I'm going to show you something that's going to change your life forever. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, now here's what, what does it mean to be in Christ? Where's my envelope? Where's my hundred dollars? If any man be in Christ, to be in Christ means to have the same status before the Father yeah. that Christ has before the Father because you and he are one before God. You were, you're not listening. You were together through the whole process. So to be in Christ means to be credited with everything that he has. This is what grace is. It is undeserved favor. Favor you didn't work for. Results you didn't get. He got them. This is why the Bible calls you more than a conqueror. A conqueror is the person who wins. Who fights the battle and wins. More than a conqueror is somebody who didn't fight and gets handed the victory. You didn't hear what I just said. More than, I'm not a conqueror. I'm more than a conqueror. He won the battle and gave me the result. That's grace. Are you here? And see, we've been preaching grace. What we need to be preaching is the finished work of Jesus. 
because grace doesn't tell us what it is. Grace is the result. What the message of grace is, is a message that the work is finished. And all you have to do is receive it. Actually, you don't even have to believe it. Sit down. Sit, you, you don't even have to believe it. All you have to do is receive it. The Bible already calls you a believer. You didn't get it. You didn't get it. You're trying to believe. No, 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 no. You, you, you stop trying to believe. Receive. Stop trying to believe. I'm going to show you something to change your life. Stop trying to believe it. Receive it. This is what, this is what Paul said. He said, I, he said I, I'm concerned with, with, about you. That Satan will deceive you the very same way he deceived Eve. How did he deceive Eve? He convinced her that she needed to do something to become what God had already made her. You didn't hear what I just said. He convinced her that she needed to do something to become what God had already made her. What do you mean? He said, if you eat this, God knows you'll be like him. And he had already made her in his image and in his likeness. But if the enemy can convince you that you have to perform in order to receive what he has already made you, he will keep you in this burdensome, heavy religion. When Jesus said, my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. I travel this world and I don't see a lot of Christians with an easy burden. I see them struggling and toiling. Watch it, I'm almost done. Almost done. Almost done. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. He doesn't say a renewed creation. Doesn't say an enriched creation says a talk to me talk, talk, talk to me talk to me talk to me okay and so 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 here so, so so just on the basis of that if you are a new creation then you must be something other than man if you're a new creation you have to be something other than man because man is the original creation. But no, you know, you didn't. No, 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 no. Lay your hand on your brother. Lay your hand on your sister and tell him, don't you ever say you're only human again. That is not true about you. You new creation, you. I said, lay your hand upon your brother, upon your sister. You got to get and, and say, and tell, don't you ever say Again, I'm only human. Not if you're a new creation. You have to be something other than only human. Let me, let me, let me give you. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it does not. Where are my Bible readers? And it does not yet appear what we shall be but here's the thing you will never appear to be what you shall be unless you first accept you're a son son is where this starts you, you didn't get it you didn't get it if any man be in Christ he is a new creation old things have passed away and that doesn't just mean your sins have passed away it doesn't just mean your guilt and shame. It doesn't just mean your transgression has passed away. Old things have passed away. And behold, all things have become. Old things have passed away. And behold, all things. So all the old stuff has passed away, including how you prosper. See, that's passed away. Prospering by work, that's passed away. That's not how you prosper. You new creation, you. How you get healed has passed away. 
no you don't you know no 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 see how how you walk in divine health has passed away you don't walk in divine health by medicine alone all right because the life of the new creation is not the blood that's old creation the life of the new creation is the spirit it is the spirit that gives life to the new creation not the blood you're not listening to me when Jesus gets up he says touch me a spirit has not flesh and bone there's no blood in that body the body is not being kept alive by blood it's being kept alive by the spirit yes, sir. And so the Bible says, if the spirit that raised up Christ Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he will give life to your mortal body through his spirit. Your life is not in your blood. That's one of the things that passed away. I'm almost finished. I'm almost finished. See, this is why. You don't need to go to anybody's service to get healed. <laughs> you new creation, you. Now, 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 what happens when you get amongst other believers is there's more rivers flowing than just yours. See, Jesus said, of those that are out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. When you get in a congregation like this, there are more streams flowing in your direction. But it's the same power that heals. I'm almost done. If any man be in Christ, he is a new question. All things have passed away, and behold, all things are become new. Oh, next slide. And all things are of God. Translation. Now, everything that is true about you is what God says about you. And if God didn't say it about you, then it's not true about you all things are of God everything about you you new creation you is what God says the Lord said it to me this way apostle and I'm almost done he said it's like it's like a, he said it's like uh, you call it in your country trademark infringement you call it copyright the creator of a thing is the only one who has the right to define it when you create it you have the right to call it what you want to call it and no one else can change what you call it because you created it you didn't hear me and if anyone else tries to call it something other than what you called it it's an infringement it's a copyright it's a trademark violation God in Christ Jesus created the new creation. He's the only one who has the authority to name it. You didn't hear me. If, if I am the creator of Rolls Royce, you can't make a car that looks like a Rolls Royce and call it a Rolls Royce. Are you still here? Only the creator can define it. So when God calls you healed, you didn't hear what I just said. He's the only one who has the right to declare to you who you are. When he says you're prospered, when he says you're well, when he says you're holy and blameless and unreprovable in his sight, he's the only one who has the authority to name you. And anybody else who names you, including you, is lying about you and the problem is we got new creations lying about themselves because they don't know what God has named them now watch this watch this you know this scripture you can quote this scripture but watch it change right before your eyes Romans chapter 12 Verse number one, I beseech you. Let me put it in, in English. I'm begging you. I'm, I'm pleading with you. I beseech you. Therefore, brethren, watch this. By the mercies of God, 
I'm, I'm begging you because you have no idea how merciful God has been to you. You, 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 you don't have a clue yet of the depth of his mercy. I'm pleading with you because God has been so merciful to you that you change the presentation of you to God that you present your but that you present you're not listening I'm, I'm I'm begging with you I'm pleading with you because you don't yet have a revelation of how good God has been to you that you start changing the way you talk about yourself to God change how you present yourself to him you come to him saying you're unworthy I'm a wretch I'm undone Paul says I'm begging you change how you present yourself to God and present yourself as a living sacrifice present yourself as holy no you didn't get it you, no no you didn't get it. you didn't get it you didn't get it. I'm begging you when you come to God to start calling yourself holy Clarence this is your holy son, Clarence, coming, God. I'm just reading the Bible. I'm begging you that from now on, when you present yourself to God, present yourself holy, present yourself acceptable. Father, this is, your, this is the son you accepted. You didn't hear This is the son you accepted. When did he accept? He accepted me in Christ Jesus. This is the son you accepted I'm coming to you are you here I, I said are you here I'm begging you that when you come to God call yourself holy call yourself healed call yourself delivered call yourself the head and not the tail call yourself above and not beneath call yourself are you still here I, I got to show you a scripture that I hadn't planned on showing you. But, uh, but I, I need to show it to you. Keep playing. Lay your hand on your brother. Lay your hand on your sister. I'm almost done. Ugh. I got to show this to you because I'm, I got to go back here and make a point in Romans 12. And woo. Mm. Pray in the spirit over somebody's life real quick. Go to Colossians chapter 1 and verse 21. I'm going back here to Romans 12. Keep your hand on somebody. Don't stop. Don't stop. Go to Colossians chapter 1. Apostle Amos told me not to hold back. Notice what it says. He says, and you who were once alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works. I want you to see where you were an enemy of God. You were only an enemy of God in your mind. You were never an enemy of God in his mind. You didn't hear what I just said. You were only an enemy of God in your mind. You were never an enemy of God in his mind. He was always going to reconcile you. He was always going to bring you back. He was always going to make you new. You were never an enemy to him. You were only an enemy in your own mind. Watch this. And you who were once alienated and enemies in your own mind by wicked works. Yet now he is reconciled. Watch this. In the body of his flesh through death to present you holy he reconciled you Jesus. so he could turn to the father and call you holy yeah. he no you didn't get he washed your sins away so he could say father these are your holy children in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight this is how god this is how jesus is talking about you to the father he is saying you are holy you are blameless and you are above reproach but bishop you don't know what i did last night darling you don't know what he did two thousand years ago but bishop you don't know what i'm struggling with no sir you don't know what he did for you and unfortunately we haven't preached the whole thing to you 
but we're going to start preaching the whole thing. Watch, watch, watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it. So watch this. God is making this presentation of you. Now watch this. Watch the power. Jesus is making this presentation of you. This is, this is your holy son, Clarence, Father. He's believing in me. This is your son that's blameless, Father. He's believing me. This is your son that's above reproach, Father. He's believing in me. Now Paul says in Romans 12, because Jesus is making this presentation of you. I'm begging you to start agreeing with his presentation of you. I, I beg you to present yourself holy and acceptable. Now lay your hand on your brother, lay your hand on your sister. I'm going to leave you with this. You did not get born again because you confessed Jesus Christ as Lord. You got born again because you finally said on earth what God had said about Jesus from heaven. No, you, no, you didn't get it. You didn't get it. If God had not called Jesus Lord, you calling Jesus Lord would have done nothing for you. See, the book of Hebrews says when he raised him from the dead, he said, sit here, Lord. The father called Jesus Lord. When he raised him from the dead, read Hebrews 1. Are you there? And when you agreed with what the father had said, yes. that's when the power of God went into operation to save you. Because it is agreeing with what God has said that releases the power of transformation. Go back to Romans 12. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. D did you get what I just said? In other words, it's when I say what God has said. See, the Bible says, Thy word, O God, is forever settled in heaven. It's not settled on earth. It's settled in heaven. Somebody has to settle it on earth. That's our job. Are you there? I said, are you there? Now watch this. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Watch this, verse 2. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed. Be transformed. Be transformed. Be transformed. See, he didn't say you need to renew your mind. He said, if you'll start changing your presentation, your mind will get renewed. No, you didn't hear what I just said. See, we've been trying to renew our minds. I need to renew my mind. I need to renew my mind. I need to renew my mind. I need... No, you need to start making the right presentation. When you start making the right presentation, your mind will get renewed. Because the renewing of your mind is not something you do. It's something the word does and the more you say you're holy the more you say you're blameless the more you say you're righteous the more you say you're healed the more you will begin to be transformed into the image of what you behold this is why the Bible says let the weak say I'm strong let the poor say I'm rich this is why the word says let the redeemed of the Lord Say so. Let them say so. If you've been redeemed from sickness, say so. If you've been redeemed from poverty, say so. If you've been redeemed from lack, say so. Touch two people and say, you better say so. I said, touch three people and tell them, you better say so. Tell them the word of God is going to come to pass in your life not because God said so but because you said what God said and when you say what he says power begins to be released I need somebody to lay their hand upon their brother and say in the name of Jesus I declare to you 
from this night forward you change the presentation of yourself to God you new creation you start calling yourself holy and watch what happens start declaring you're righteous and watch what happens start saying you're healed and watch what happens start declaring you're the head and not the tail start declaring you're blessed and not cursed lay your hand on your brother lay your hand on your sister and say in the name of Jesus I declare to you you new creation you you will never be the same again lay your hand on your brother lay your hand on your sister and say in the name of Jesus right now Jesus is saying you're holy agree with him right now Jesus is saying you're blameless agree with him right now Jesus is saying you're above reproach you're accepted by God agree with him say it right now Jesus is saying no sickness no disease no infirmity can remain in your body you new creation you agree with him it is illegal for Satan to charge you twice for what Jesus has already paid for once I'm gonna say it again it is illegal for Satan to charge you twice for what Jesus has already paid for once look at your neighbor and say it is finished receive it receive it receive it lay your hand on somebody if you pray in the Holy Ghost begin to pray in the Spirit right now if you're watching me live streaming begin there I see it begin to pray in the Spirit right now in the name of Jesus come on church give me 60 seconds in the Holy Ghost I take authority over sickness disease distress malfunction malady in the name of Jesus spirit of infirmity spirit of palsy demonic oppression possession of the enemy generational curse lay your hand on somebody in the name uh, you have no right you cannot remain in this new creation I need somebody to pray in the spirit I'm done yes God I'll do it yeah 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 <laughs> yeah yeah in Jesus name it is so yes it is it is so lift your hands Eh, lay your hand on somebody quickly. People of God, I need you to pray in the spirit. Hey, I need you to pray in the spirit. Don't spectate, participate. Lay your hand on somebody and pray in the Holy Ghost. Yes, God. Pray in the Holy Ghost. In the Robosche, in the name of Jesus yes God I'll do that if you believe in God for a manifestation in your physical body if you believe in God for a manifestation of his healing grace in your physical body I need you to come right over here right now quick move 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 quick come here right now 
move ebo rea shokarama right over here ebo rea seke vonde leba rea shoka visando rakasata people of god lift your hands and lift your voices You all are married. You're a pastor. You're a preacher. Grab hands. Grab hands. Lift your hands up before the Lord, everybody. Lift your hands up before the Lord, everybody. Lift your hands. If you're at your seat, lift your hands. If you're watching me live streaming, lift your hands. Just a few moments ago. Close your eyes and lift your hands. I saw the Spirit of God beginning to descend upon you. And the witness of the Spirit that came to me was that some of the things that I have been declaring, the Spirit of God has begun dealing with you about. You have begun to see some of them. You have begun to recognize some of them. Some of them you've begun to preach. Watch him. The power of God is on him. Some of them you have begun to preach. Others of them you've been saying, God, I can't preach this. People won't hear this. They won't believe this. They won't receive this. Do you really? I literally hear you asking God, do you actually want me to preach this? And he's saying, I brought you here tonight to confirm to you that you are hearing from me. Because there is another level of ministry that I'm leading you and the people that are connected to your anointing to. And I shall spring you forth, says the Spirit of grace, with fresh revelation. And there shall be a fresh sound even that comes from your voice. And there shall be a fresh tone. Even the modality, says the Spirit of God, of how you impart truth I've begun to deal with you about. And the Lord says, not only shall this manifest in your ministry, but he also says that there is a healing that is coming in the body of your wife. And this infirmity that has plagued her from weight, uh, from the weight of stress and strain, this digestive issue and the other issues that have been discovered. For I see even a report that has come from a doctor of something that has been revealed as we watch him, watch him, watch him. And I see the Spirit of God declaring to you that a fresh wind blows through your house tonight blows watch him watch him blows through your body tonight and the spirit of the lord has settled the matter in your favor i need you to lift your hands before the lord everybody that the spirit of the lord says i have settled the matter in your favor and i shall begin to bring from the north and the south those that will stand with you and hear this message that i have placed in your mouth speak it says the spirit of god it is time I need a woman of God uh, to come and just lay their hands upon this woman apostle just pick one anyone that you trust just come have a lay her hands on this woman God is healing her and you hear me you hear me you will go back to the physician and the physician will declare that what they saw in your body has been completely disappeared as a matter of fact they're even gonna tell you they may have made a mistake but it was no mistake the power of God just manifested his finished work in your body because you have accepted what he has said about you the power of God began flowing on you just a few moments ago lift up your hands there was a, a lump in the breast and the power of God is healing your physical body in the name of Jesus a watcher 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 in the name I need a woman uh, uh, Tiffany come lay your hands upon her chest in the name of I need people to lift up their hands now begin to worship in the spirit I want everybody here just to lift your hands in the name of Jesus and just begin to declare before the Lord that you are holy that you're acceptable begin to declare before him that you are a new creation and that healing belongs you begin to say it out of your own mouth lift up your voice and begin to speak father in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus I set myself in agreement by the spirit of grace in Jesus name I speak soundness in Jesus in woo, this issue of blood stops now in the name of Jesus all of it gone all of it all of it pick him up lift your hands up close your eyes Ever. 
illegal. You're illegal in this body. Go. I need somebody to lift up their hands. There was a woman here, and I do not mean to embarrass you. There was a woman here, and you've had an issue of blood for Arabo Rasa. You've had an issue of blood for a few months, on and off, in a regular flow. Who are you? Is it, which which one is it? Ask if it's her. She's out. People of God, lift your hands all over the building. I do, not, I do not mean to embarrass anyone. But when the Spirit of God pinpoints something, I must, I must follow Him. I just went to this woman. When I laid my hands on her, I said it. When I came over here, the Lord said, declare it. And then I went back over to her and I asked, what is your condition? And what did you say? It's me. Lift your hands up. Because I say this by the spirit of grace. Yes, God. Romo esan esan oshan emekete esoto. This matter has gone through several women in your family. There has even been demise from it. And I see someone actually having passed on from a matter similar to this. Watch her, watch her. The power of God is on the woman. Va ele more isale ishta. Satan, you're a liar. And the Spirit of God says, you shall live and not die. And the fear of death leaves you tonight. That matter has been settled in your favor. I need someone to lift their hands. Yes, God. And the Lord would say, three days from this day three days mark it down within three days from this day this matter will have completely cleared up and it shall not come again the spirit of the lord has settled it and from this moment the lord says do not ask me to heal you again do not call upon me concerning it again thank me that you are whole and you are healed and watch what i will do says the spirit of the lord for it has already been settled in your favor come 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 lay your hands here in the name of Jesus now 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 lift your hands and worship my God lift your hands and worship my God lift your hands and worship my God lift your hands hey! lift your hand lift your hands and worship my Jesus Seba sandalaba I need you to stretch your hands in her direction and shout never again three times. Ready? Go! Now I want you to shout like that was your sister receiving a miracle from God. Yarebo Saterebaka Vanderebo Reato Raba Esha Sonderebari Anderebaka Soto Vandelema, lift your hands up. There's a man in this building, you were injured. I don't know if it was an automobile accident or a fall. Your back was injured and there are discs literally that are lying almost on top of one another. There has been deterioration. And, and I see, I, I'm seeing the numbers L6, L7 as in discs. I'm seeing actual numbers. Uh, uh, 
as I'm standing here and the spirit of the living God is, is manifesting his finished work in your physical body, whoever you are, I need you to go ahead and just start bending over because the power of God is healing your body. Whoever you are, just go ahead and start bending over. The power of God is healing your body. Whoever it is, just start bending, just start bending, just start bending. All the pain is leaving your body. And this is not just the release of pain. There's a miracle being worked in your physical body. Just bend, 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 bend. Is that the man there? Is that him? In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, there see more than one. Come, 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 come. Resate, voshata. People of God, lift your hands and worship. Bring him to me, 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 bring him to me. Was it a fall or an accident? What was it? It was that car accident? Yeah, bend over three times real quick. Bend, 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 just bend, 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 up, 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 up. Get up, get up, get up. Do it again, do it again, do it again, do it, do it again. Do it again. Yeah, yeah, one more time. Do it again. The, the, yeah. Now, now get up and twist to the right and twist to the left. Just do it. Do it. Do it. Move. 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 Now lift your hands up. I need, to, I need you to lift your hands, people of God. I need you to lift your hands. Bring him. Oh, the glow. Bring him, bring him, bring him, bring him. Love. So arise from your rest and be blessed by our praise as we glory in your embrace. Oh, oh as your presence. Sing it. Now fills this place. Lift your hands. Oh, oh, the glory.
Lift your hands before the living God. Lift your hands before the living God. Lift your hands before the living God. Fill this place. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. I was standing right there next to the apostle when my sister Tiffany was ministering before I came up here. And the Holy Ghost said to me, he said, there's an anointing being released while she was singing. The Lord said to me, there's an anointing that is being released. He said, and when you minister, Glory to God. he said that anointing will intensify. He said, and he said, tell the people, we must God grant me witness of the Holy Ghost. I heard this right here. And I know, I know, the, I know his voice. Glory to God. He said to me, tell the people, that there's a miracle anointing that's going to rest on them for the next three days. I need, you, I need you to lift your hands. Oh my, oh my. I wish I, I, I don't have, I don't have time. Galatians 3, 5 says, He that supplies unto you the Spirit and works miracles among you. Does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? See, he that supplies unto you the Spirit. So miracles occur when the Holy Spirit is supplied yes, Lord. to a situation, to a circumstance. Oh. The miracle anointing is not just a healing anointing. It's an anointing that supplies the Holy Spirit to situations. Causes the Holy Spirit, gives the Holy Spirit access by revelation by impartation and miracles are worked the bible talks about the working of miracles. of miracles in other words the miracle anointing causes things to start working that weren't working before that yes, anointing lord. hit it yes lord oh god i wish i had time oh, oh. Ooh. I feel the presence of God. There are some of you that got you have situations, and in order for the thing to happen, somebody's got to do this that causes somebody to do that that causes somebody to do that, and and, and you're wondering how is that going to happen? The Holy Spirit's going to cause people to start working <laughs> to bring about His desired result. As a matter of fact, there are people in the next 48 hours that are going to start moving. In situations and circumstances you have before the Lord. Some of you, your paperwork is going to rise to the top oh, of the stack. Okay. I don't know who I'm talking to. Yeah, yeah. Some of you, God's going to cause you to meet someone who's going to show you favor. You're not going to meet the person who'll say no. You're going to walk in and you're going to meet the person who will show you favor. I need you to look at someone and tell them somebody has already been selected to show you favor. Just tell them that. No, you need to say it. Look at your name and say, somebody has already been selected to show you favor. Doesn't matter what your credit looks like. Somebody has to favor you. Doesn't matter that you don't have the down payment. Somebody has to favor you. Doesn't matter that you don't have the money for the car. Somebody has got to favor you. God's going to lead you to somebody who will show you favor. I need you to shout it down your road. Favor! Favor! three days just thank me for it just it's already settled in your favor i hear the holy ghost say don't even just don't even pray about it just thank me for it whatever that thing is i hear the hey, hey. Woo! watch and see 
Somebody's about to move into a new apartment. Somebody's about to get a house. Somebody's about to get a car, not with no money down, with no money at all. Somebody's about to be given an automobile. Hear what I'm saying. Somebody's about to bring a price down so you can afford it. I don't know who I'm talking to. Hey, 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 hey. 